Taking a shower can be a relaxing experience or feel like yet another daily chore. For the most part, nothing beats showering after a long day or an intense workout. But what would happen if you actually stopped showering? Here's a look. When you start skipping showers, the most noticeable effect will be a strong body odor. While a shower would normally wash away the odor-causing bacteria, the bacteria will now linger and break down sweat in the apocrine glands, which have many proteins according to Medical News Today. You're a fat loser and you have body odor. All right. All right. Now is everyone nice and pissed off? The apocrine gland is located in certain parts of the body, including the armpits, groin, and face. And as Healthline explained, you should clean these areas daily. While you might have people scooting over, your stench won't last forever. In The Atlantic, physician James Hamblin wrote about his own experience with giving up showering and remarked how his smell changed over time. He said, After a while, the idea goes, your ecosystem reaches a steady state and you stop smelling bad. I mean, you don't smell like rose water or Axe body spray, but you don't smell like B.O. either. You just smell like a person. If you see blotches on your skin after giving up showering, they may be more than dirt. Medical News Today explained that not cleaning your skin regularly can produce dark patches called dermatitis neglecta. Our bodies regularly create new cells and shed as many as 40,000 skin cells per day, according to Very Well Health. Regular bathing helps to remove the excess dead cells and prevent flaking of the skin. When you don't shower, Medical News Today explained, the dead skin cells can accumulate with other components such as sweat, oil, dirt, smoke, and germs to make the skin dark, scabby, and callous. If poor hygiene persists, secondary infections, especially ones that cause the skin to crack and bleed, can arise from dermatitis neglecta. Dermatitis neglecta is treatable, according to Medical News Today. Cleaning up affected areas with alcohol or antibacterial wipes can eliminate the brown plaques. Only in severe cases will you have to see a doctor for dermatological treatment. Jock itch is a fungal infection that may make it difficult for you to stop scratching yourself, especially in areas where you sweat, such as the feet, inner thighs, and buttocks, explained Alberta Health Services. The number one thing is stool consistency, and even if when the stools are perfect, it's a great day, and if you're wiping a little bit more, it's a bad day. Holly L. Phillips, a woman's health physician and medical contributor to CBS News in New York City, told Women's Health, Keeping moist, salty, sweat-soaked clothing close to your skin for long periods after working out leads to irritation and the increased risk of small abrasions or skin breakdown. This can raise your risk of bacterial and fungal infections, like staph bacteria or the fungus that causes jock itch. Even if you ditch the sweaty clothes immediately, you really shouldn't ditch the post-workout shower. Phillips continued by saying, It's not the smell of sweat that you have to worry about, but the fact that perspiration left behind on your skin allows bacteria to proliferate. Along with smelly body odor comes the risk of acne. According to Very Well Health, not showering causes dead skin cells and other bacteria to accumulate on the skin. Excessive amounts of dead skin cells and oil can get trapped in pores. These blockages can cause blackheads, or if bacteria is introduced, inflamed acne. For this reason, the publication recommends washing your face daily, even when you shower less often. However, acne isn't just limited to the face. David Lorcher, dermatologist and curology founder, explained to Well and Good, Sweating and humidity can aggravate breakouts by giving the bacteria on the skin a better environment to grow. Restrictive, tight clothing like athletic clothing can also contribute, as sources of friction can aggravate acne as well. Since we launched almost four years ago, we've helped over 100,000 people get clear skin. And there are about 40 million people in the United States with acne, so we still have a long way to go. While body odor may lessen after a period of not showering, there's a yeast called Candida albicans waiting to move into your private areas. This bacteria causes yeast infections, a type of fungal infection that affects up to three out of four women in their lifetime, according to the Mayo Clinic. But in addition to lack of sleep, also a poor diet or an illness or pregnancy can also predispose you to vaginal yeast infections. Yeast infections, which can also affect men, thrive in humid and moist places, according to Healthline. When you don't shower every day, you're opening the doors for the candida bacteria to settle in. 
not one to be a rude house guest. Yeast infections come with several unwanted gifts, including watery cottage cheese looking discharge, redness and swelling of the genitals, and a burning sensation during urination. To avoid recurring yeast infections, Healthline recommends three simple steps. Wear cotton underwear and loose clothing, take daily showers, wash and sterilize any clothing and towels you use during your infection. There's something wrong with your toilet. As if straight out of a low-budget sci-fi movie, a germ invasion can occur in the absence of frequent showering. Germs not only take over, they also produce fungus. Jeanette Neshawat, a family and emergency medicine physician, told Bustle, We all have good bacteria that lives on our skin. But if you don't help out the good bacteria by washing and exfoliating, dead skin cells accumulate, creating a medium for bacterial or fungal overgrowth, infection, and inability to fight the bad bacteria and fungus we encounter. This doesn't mean you need to scrub your skin raw, but there's a case to be made for showering often. Dermatologist Estee Williams told SimpleMost, If you work out or live in a hot climate, your body will perspire more and sweat needs to be washed off or else acne, folliculitis, fungus, and yeast infections may develop. When you don't shower enough, your hair starts to get oily, which may make you feel self-conscious, according to Healthline. Oily hair comes from the sebaceous glands that live in your hair. When your hair is dirty and dry, these glands release an oily substance called sebum to moisturize the hair. George Rylander, a master stylist at New York City-based Dop Dop Salon, told Women's Health, If you don't wash your hair every two to three days, you will get a greasy, oily buildup. Your hair will look and feel dirty and start to smell as it takes in the smells of the environment. Healthline explained that washing your hair once a day is necessary for people prone to greasy hair, but avoid washing your hair more frequently than that. This can cause your glands to produce more oil in response to the extra shampoo, according to Healthline. A common reason to take showers is to be clean and healthy, but the irony is that you may be making yourself sicker. According to Harvard Health Blog, the immune system needs to be exposed to microorganisms to develop an immune memory. This is important in having the immune system quickly mount an immune response to a foreign invader that may harm the body. Isabel Montemayor, a registered dietitian, told Bustle, The immune system is composed of cells and organs that help prevent and fight infection. It is important to strengthen it to lower the chances of getting sick. Taking care of your scalp is a juggling act. When you wash your hair too much, you risk damaging your scalp and hair. And when you don't wash your hair enough, well, you risk damaging your scalp and hair. Hair stylist Tanya Lay said in an interview with Insider, A total lack of moisture from stripping oils can also cause a dry, flaky scalp, and as your scalp dries out, so does your hair. This can lead to an itchy scalp, according to the Cleveland Clinic. In turn, a dry, itchy scalp can, quote, lead to increased hair shedding, according to dermatologist Shilpi Ketterpal. And don't even think about picking your dry scalp. Niket Sanpal, an internist and professor at Turo College in New York City, told Bustle, If you then pick at those flakes or scrape at them, you can even end up damaging your hair follicles, which could lead to hair loss. I think that's the worst thing I've ever heard. Eczema is more than a rash. The National Eczema Association describes eczema and atopic dermatitis, a more severe type of eczema, as a condition in which the body is losing moisture. The lack of moisture means there's not a lot of oil to lubricate the skin. This dry skin then weakens the skin barrier, the upper layer of the skin which protects the body from bacteria, allergens, and other invading pathogens. While constant exposure to harsh soap and chemicals can irritate eczema further, the National Eczema Association explained that taking a bath or shower at least once a day can help retain moisture and prevent dry skin. Even if you don't want to shower, spending a few minutes under the water can help, according to Everyday Health. I am determined to be a happy, healthy person. I won't let my skin control me. Nobody's perfect. Embrace life. If you were to ask someone the most important part of the body, they might say the heart or the brain. However, the real answer may not be inside your body, but rather outside. Skin is the unsung hero and largest organ in the body. The uppermost layer of skin acts as a physical barrier to prevent water loss and protect against outside pathogens that can harm the body and cause infection, explained Healthline. However, not all bacteria are detrimental to human health. A 
2018 review in Nature explained that the skin barrier wouldn't be possible without some good bacteria that evolved to live and work with the skin to defend against dangerous invaders. Bacteria also warn the immune system of potentially harmful germs. But the skin isn't impenetrable, and showering too much can make it weaker. Professor Niket Sunpal explained to Bustle, you can deplete the essential oils, lipids, and bacteria that help your skin fight off inflammation, maintain a smooth look, and reinforce its protective barrier. Your hair will thank you for skipping a hair wash now and then. According to Healthline, oils in the hair called sebum are essential in keeping hair shiny and moisturized, and it is especially important in keeping curled hair soft and not frizzy. However, excessive shampooing can wash off sebum. Dana Boyer, a New York-based hairstylist, told HuffPost that many shampoos also contain sulfates, which are strong detergents that cause hair to dry out and become frizzy. And integrative dermatologist Elizabeth Hughes explained to Healthline, if people didn't rely on these detergents so much, the quality of people's skin would probably be better, especially as people get older. If you're dealing with constant frizz, you may want to consider cutting back on how often you wash your hair and utilize moisturizing hair products. Celebrity hairstylist Tanya Lay told Insider that such products can, quote, help restore the hair cuticles by making them more soft, manageable, and most important, luscious. Oily hair's BFF dandruff is never too far behind. While there can be different reasons for dandruff, according to Medical News Today, a common one is excess oils. Jessica Wu, a dermatologist and assistant clinical professor of dermatology at the University of Southern California Medical School, told Everyday Health, It's a common misconception that dandruff is caused by dryness. In reality, it's usually due to an overgrowth of a harmless yeast. In some people, the yeast starts to feed on the excess oil and dead skin cells on the scalp, causing the skin cells to shed more frequently and clump into flakes. Dandruff appears to be the exception to washing your hair once a day. Stuart H. Kaplan, a dermatologist in Beverly Hills, explained to Everyday Health, Not shampooing enough will only make your dandruff worse. It causes more oil and dead skin cells to accumulate on your scalp, which the yeast and fungi just continue to feed on. Healthline advised that people with dandruff wash their hair with a shampoo that contains either zinc pyrithium, which eliminates bacteria and fungus, or salicylic acid, which reduces the extra oil and flakiness. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Health Digest videos about your favorite fitness facts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.